stop some coffee. Mm. Great. Uh, fourth question here today, it's a really important one, is how do we forgive? Um, and this is a really important thing, and if you're watching this, I'd really encourage you to watch to the end, and I'll give you some really practical steps to do that. Let me just say this firstly, uh, we have to forgive. Forgiveness is not an option. It's not something we choose, should I do or should I not do? Uh, we have no option other than to forgive. You know, the Lord's Prayer, literally, we will receive forgiveness in the measure we give forgiveness. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And, you know, Jesus told the parable of the, you know, the guy who literally in today's money, he's forgiven about $500 million. He's just forgiven a debt that he will never pay no matter how long he works all of his life. And then the same guy goes to somebody who owes him in today's money $20 or $30. And he's like, give me what you owe me. And he throws the guy who owes him $20 in prison. And Jesus said that the, the guy who was forgiven the large debt but wouldn't forgive the smaller debt will be thrown in prison and delivered to the tormentors until he's paid everything that he owes. And literally, when we don't forgive, come on, here's my point. Just follow me carefully in this one. God forgave your sins before you and I were ever born. He forgave your sins, the foundation of the world. He forgave your sins 2,000 years ago. Your sins are forgiven. Your debt has been canceled in heaven's economy. But you and I walk in the experience of that forgiveness of sins when we repent of our sins, when we, when we don't try and hide them, but when we bring them to God and say, God, forgive me, when we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive them and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we confess our sins and turn from them, God forgives us. My point is he's already forgiven us, but we receive the experience of cleansing and forgiveness. What happens though when we don't forgive somebody else is it blocks our own receiving from God. You know, many people quote Mark 11, 24. It's one of my favorite verses, a fake verse. What sort of things you desire when you pray? Believe you have received them and then you'll see them happen. Mark 11, 24. But the very next verse is not so often quoted. Mark 11, 25. It says, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anybody, forgive them, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. So let me give you some keys to forgiving here. So number one, I would actually say this. Try to go and talk to the person. Um, I've, I've seen this quite a lot where somebody's trying to forgive somebody and they've never actually gone to their brother, Matthew 18, and talked the thing over. At times I've had people forgive me of things I've never even done. And what they're actually doing is they've imagined I've done something or they've imagined that I'm angry with them or they, they've just imagined something that wasn't even real and they've tried to, um, you know, get, try to forgive for something they never actually... If they would have bothered to come to me and say, hey, what happened then? They'd find out, oh, <laughs> you know, we don't even need to forgive. So quite often Satan's trying to, you know, drop in the gap between relationships and make us feel offended when there isn't even an offense there. But again, sometimes there can be an offense. But I would actually say go to your brother or your sister, you know, Matthew 18, and try to listen. Try to Share what your experience of that was, but also listen to what their experience of that thing was. Um, and often, I think that solves usually 50 to 70% of the problem. But let's be clear, it doesn't solve every problem. Sometimes we're going to go in righteousness to somebody and try to bring resolution to that, and they're just going to not want to engage in anything we're saying or doing, and that's not going to bring resolve. So how do we forgive when the other person won't reconcile something? How do we forgive when we're no longer even able to go to somebody? You know, at times we'll, we should be, we need to forgive people who've maybe died years ago. How do you forgive somebody who died 20 years ago? Here's what I would do. I would do it, let me just give you my process, and this really, really works. I would do this really intentionally. Like if, if there's unforgiveness in your life and it's been the, I think it's quite easy to forgive somebody when, you know, if somebody's just rude for you in the moment, you forgive them. But when something's been in your life and your heart for a long season, and by that I mean at least several weeks, months, or years, I would take this really seriously. Here's what I would do. I'd take some time, get alone with God, and actually, you know, do business as it were with God. Come to God and say, I'm going to lay this thing, like a burial service, I'm going to lay this to rest once and for all. I'm going to take an hour or two if I need to, on a Tuesday afternoon, whatever, but when I finish, this is going to be dealt with. So my point is, at times, I think we're trying to pray 
namby pamby little prayers. Oh my God, I forgive them. And then we wonder why that doesn't stick. And I would take the time to come to God and empty your heart. And even if you will, tell God the story, even if your perception of what happened is not completely true, but, but lay that all out before the Lord. Tell him, um, give him what your feeling of that is. And then before him, from your heart, I would say, God, I forgive that person. I release them of all of those things. And I would pray this out loud. Now, let's say, Lord, I covenant with you. I'll never go back to this. I won't remember this anymore. I will cancel this death uh, that I have towards this person. And I think when we do that, what I would then do is write that down. And you don't need to send it to the person, but write that agreement down and seal it. Maybe take communion and sign it and date it. And then say from this moment forward, here's the real key. We forgive by faith. So if we, what we're really doing is to saying, for this moment forward, that's my position. Like when somebody gets married, it's a joyful thing, it's a celebration, it's lots of great things. But in a way, there's a sacred covenant that's cut, and we even put it in writing. And I think if you can seal that and say, today, they are now officially forgiven. Now, the challenge is, your emotions, your memories, don't automatically follow that prayer, that agreement. And what usually happens is people will do that, they'll pray, and then, you know, the next day or three weeks later, they're driving and that thing pops up and all of those emotions and they're hurt, and they were back into the thing. What we've got to do is keep coming back to the agreement. So we pray, we make that agreement, we officially forgive, we release. This back on. So what happens two weeks later, you're driving down the highway and that thing happens again. Here's what happens. You come, you say, stop to your emotions, your feelings of hurt, offense, pain, oh, what we do to me? You say, stop. You don't deny those emotions, because that's not real, that's not faith. But what you do is you deny their permanence, you deny their dominance, and you say, stop, and you come back to that agreement. And you engage your will with what you've already done. And you say, thank you, Lord. Although I'm feeling a whole load of things right now emotionally, this is what I believe. They are forgiven. I'm not even going to go there anymore. I refuse to do that. And then a great thing to do as well is pray in tongues. Stop praying for them. Just stop blessing them. Stop blessing them. I like to do a really sneaky one. If Satan keeps reminding me of a hurt somebody did to me, I'll just send them money. I'll bless them. Send them a coffee card. Or just have a, I mean, just go and bless them. And when you do that, you're you're actually you're not trying to stay neutral in your forgiveness you it's like an act of warfare you're declaring i refuse to be the victim here and i'm going to bless them and i've released them of every hurt they've ever had towards me and i promise you if you'll if you'll do that if you'll make the agreement the covenantal positional agreement and then in your life no matter whether you're feeling high or low up or down keep coming back to that agreement what will happen is your feelings your memories your experience will begin it can happen quickly or it may be a process but it will begin aligning with your agreement and you end up living in that place where what you feel really matches what you prayed on that tuesday afternoon and what the covenant you cut with the lord and i promise you guys if you do that that will work